Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the carny started out, wasn't it? What am I doing? Yeah, what are you doing? What am I doing? This is called the Scraps Coat from Monocool Slender. So, giving it a key and I'm going to explain to you why we do this, how we do it and why we do it. So I'm just going to finish this wall and I'm going to talk you through it. Oh, guys, we're doing a Monocool Slender system on this job. And what it is, yeah, I'm going to tell you why we do a key coat, a scratch coat, whatever you want to call it. People call it all different types of things. I call it a scratch coat. And in my scratch coat, it basically it can be OCR or it can be it can be it can have fibers in it, it can have anything, HP12, you've got all different types, X32, Eco Rend, you've got all different types of base coats, right? And all it is is basically to, to I use it to chill out the suction. Now, some spec that you don't even need to put a key coat or a base coat onto extensions or brand new block work or brand new builds, but we always do. I find it helps um, balance out suction and um, gives us a nice key for the, the top coat to go on to so I always do it this is one wall that we've just put on we've hand applied this um, flattened it with a trowel and then we have put mesh in embedded it with the trowel and then literally then I just go over it with this scratcher with a comb, it's called a comb um, it's a bit small, usually the ones I have are a bit bigger but I picked this up the other day because I needed it and it was to hand it's a bit smaller than usual, but it brings it up really nice to be fair, I'm quite happy with it. I think on a big gable I won't want to use it because it's too small, you know, usually about that big. But it'll do for this. But anyway, we're going to show you. Um, let's go around and have a look at this side. Let's look. Just show them it, D. See how it's applied? Really tight coat behind the beads. Because when we put the top coat on a cool shot, we're bringing it out just over the bead and then we scratch it back to the bead to give it the finish so you want to make sure that you get it on nice and tight it only has to be a few mil mate two or three mil maximum really um, and then get it flat smooth make sure there's no high points we'll clean the beads off at the end going around make sure there's no snots probably more along the bottom than anything because it goes down the wall um, but other than that the sides and that'll be sound fully meshed over lap, overlapped by 100 mil so um, just helps sure up the background make it stronger so that's it really, but this is what it looked like before, all block, and uh, yeah, we're going to um, go straight onto this again, and then mesh it, simple as that. When you're laying on, you might be thinking, how do I know if I'm getting it on thick enough? Like I said to you, you don't have it too thick, but when you're laying on, you don't want to hear the scraping on the wall. If you're scraping on the wall, it's too thin, and you're not going to get mesh on it. So you don't know where scraping, you just want to hear it go nice and silent over the brickwork. Listen up. That's it. Yeah. Silent. I'll show you one when you, when you get it tight in a minute. It's too tight. So this one I'm going to do too tight. You hear that noise? Too tight, listen to this. Lovely. Silence. That's what we wanna we wanna hear nothing. Yeah, always. One, yeah. So now I'm gonna show you how I put the mesh on, yeah. So we've laid all this on. Showed you it. It's just a little panel so I can show you it. And this is the mesh. Don't know how thick it is, but it's just the basic standard render mesh, sell it everywhere. And what you do, this is how I put on a wall, so if I'm meshing it by myself. So, drop it on the floor around here. So, what I'll do is I'll drop it down. It sits on the deck, yeah? Get into position. Come around here deep. So, you can see it on the floor there. I make sure that it opens up so it goes, it's going into the wall. And what I'll do, I'll pull it up to the height I want it. You see it unraveling by itself there. And what you want to do then is focus on the bead. You want it to overlap to the bead. So, get it right to the top. Was it all back onto the bead just before it hits the spine, which is there. Yeah, you know what we do then? Got it in when I want it. Just top it off. Just to there. And then we're going to work it off. Starting from the top. Now, this is a pit that I've already cut, so it's a little bit off there. But I'll, um, I'll fill that in. Um, to be fair, it won't really make no difference anyway, but it's, I'll fill it in. 
start from the top and work your way down. Reason being, if someone starts at the bottom and you start at the top, you're going to get a bump in the middle. So you always want to start at the top and work your way down. Carrying the gear down as you come. Yeah. Bring it down. See how I'm spreading it out? It's like ironing it out, really. Getting all the lumps out as you work down. See it all in the beat, perfect down there. That's how you want it to overlap on. Ah, uh, straight on. Gear. Now oh, I do this on my beach, mate. Push it out. Push it out. Just push gear into it. This is a little trick I've taught. Well, learned over the years to do. Keeps it close and well down the bead. Take it off a bit of gear on there. Yeah. Rubbing it on. Let me show you that other. Oh, you are. <laughs> yeah, I always do that. Rub it on. When it pushes into the bead and there's mesh and it keeps the door for me behind the bead. Inside of the bead, inside of the bead, yeah, not underneath it, inside, pull that away, that's going to go there, so I'm going to use it on the corner in a second, I'm going to show you how to do an internal corner properly, push it in, start up here, inside the bead again, either a bit of a paint or something. Get a start on it and you're off though. Squeeze it onto the bead. Keep the bead nice and strong for when I come to actually put it on the top coat. I'm taking it off a bit there, fill out the bottom bit. you an internal corner these are you meant to overlap into your corners it'll give you a nice strong angle so you're getting a crack down there um, some people don't do it they're meshing to corner meshing to corner sometimes put a little slip in as well but that works put a little slip in but I'm not messing about with that I'm just doing a full full leg piece and I'm just gonna stick it in there and then I'll stick another piece coming down there then cool so you want to, to make it easier as well, you can cut sections off instead of working off the full roll, you don't have to work off full roll, but I like to, um, as much as I can use the full roll, I don't like to mess it out. Mm -hmm. But it don't make no difference, it's no right, no wrong way, this is just the render bit way, the cook way, <laughs> needs finest way. Okay, pull it up to the height where I think it's going to go. Now I know that this, when I put it in this corner, yeah, I'm going to have enough there 
I also want to overlap onto this wall. I know this already just by looking at the thickness, the width of it, you know what I mean? to get it into position and get it somewhat like not 100 mil that I want it a bit there like that really you want to overlap all over 100 mil and use your trowel to get it in position yeah so I'm happy with that put it there now I want to get it better than that so I'll just push that there so I can bring my hands up and I'll pin with that finger this one I'll pull out and I'll just lift it a little bit more there see it Yep. Just lifted it a little bit and then come here. I know that height where I want it. Spin it in. Yeah, I want you to lift. See the trowel? The trowel? Yeah. Push it in like that. You don't always have to have it open or closed. Spin it in. Yeah. Spin it in like that. And work your way down again. This here. Pull it out. Trowel. Get your trowel flat. And look. Let you. I think it might be. Pull it. Trowel again. Look. Spin it in. I'm going to work my way down. Try and not to, not to just go like that in the corner because I'm putting the mesh and there's no point putting the mesh in if you've got to cut it. But I know already that's going to be sound that. So I keep working in. Going down, using my trowel. Not the, not the toe, not the point because that'll cut it. Yeah, I'm working it in like that. Yeah. When you get to a point where you want to, you're going to go like that on this side then. Yeah? That's it. That's how you do an internal. Enjoy that, working it down. Right, now I'm going to jump down off of this. Yeah, still working it in. As I work my way down the wall, still working her in, still working her in, still working her in, still working. Yeah? And the beauty of this, right? Mm -hmm. The beauty of this is when I now put my strip from the top peak coming down, it's right. already overlapped. It's already going to be overlapped because it's nice, you know what I mean? So yeah. I'll still run it in tight, so that corner is going to be overlapped by 100 mil still, and it's going to be all nice and mint, nice and tight. So that's how you mesh a wall like that. That's how you do an internal corner like that. That's how you finish to a beam. Easy as. Now I'm going to finish this off.